What I want is a bobblehead doll. I'm just gonna tell them, someone could send it to me. All right, live for the first time. Gosh, I don't know how long it's been since we did a live feed. So, what we're gonna do today is, I don't know, but what I wanna make sure you did do was go over to Instagram and watch the trailer for the Ford Saga, episode two and three. It's gonna be awesome, you're gonna love it, I know it. We spent a lot of time and effort. We brought in Master Roshi, Steve Schwarzer, to film how to make mosaic patterns and pictures and the techniques for doing that in a can. So the true form of canister Damascus by one of the guys who helped invent it. Probably the guy who invented it. Um, also, we're making another thing, which maybe I can tell you. Can I tell them what it is? No, can't tell you what it is. But, and there's more to come. Lining up a team like the Avengers almost, you know, of people we're gonna bring into the series and it's gonna be great. We wanna inspire you and we want you to go out there and make, and make that your art. And I don't know what to do today, so I'm gonna take this piece of paper and begin our journey into um, forging. I got a piece of hair like stabbing me in the nose. So I'll take this paper, I'll put it inside of this forge, and uh, I'm looking for something, Heath. I see it over here, I'll go get it. Take this off camera. So if you have questions and you wanna ask, we hadn't done it in a while, but because we have so many people asking so many different questions, we recommend Super Chat, and that way we get to read your question and try and answer your question, as long as it's not about quantum physics. But next week we'll have our guest Neil deGrasse Tyson on, and he'll be able to answer all those questions for you, so hold those for later on. I wonder if that'll even work. Will it? Well, it will work. So, if I could forge anything right now, what would it be? I'm waiting. We have time, since it takes time for the forge to heat up. So, some of the cool things that I've been using here lately, I just wanna share with you are Gators eyewear, this is my favorite safety glasses that I've found, they make sunglasses. You can put your prescription lenses in here. Um, you just have to give them that number and they'll make them for you. But these are really great. Made out of aluminum, made in the USA, and I like them. And all kind of other stuff too, but, oh this too. Olight, this is the uh, Warrior Mini. I did a video on this. This thing's crazy bright. All that handy stuff, I feel like it helps you not get hurt and see what you're doing and all those things combine together. I'll show you a project I was working on. So this is a, I like to call it the post-apocalyptic wakizashi. Now I made this a few weeks ago in a class, but I didn't get done with mine because we were having too much fun. So this is mine, I'm gonna eventually finish it and I will have, probably do Stingray and then have Tristan do the Edo wrap over top of it. Probably have a Turk's knot. Not too complex, not a Suba, but something a little more fun that you don't feel bad going out there and chopping the woods down with it. Or zombies, especially zombies. Seems like you'd see a lot more things like this on that one TV show. Instead of people with knives, you know, you see this, or machetes, or hammers, I'm just saying. So I've got two types of forges in here, and this is a chili forge. This is the habanero. This is the one I most commonly use for everything. This is a Schwarzer ribbon burner it has a forced air, basically a turbocharger on it, 
and it will get hot enough to melt a piece of steel. So for what I'm commonly doing, I like this. Also, I can forge weld in this, and I can do anything I want to in this. But when I'm forge welding, there's higher temperatures for more extended periods of time. So for that, I will use this forge. Uh, if you're starting out, get whatever you can get. There's a lot of tutorials on building forges on YouTube and on the internet, and you can find some great ones out there. So build a forge if you can't afford to buy one, because there's some good plans for one. And uh, if you can buy one, you will be very happy with anything that Chili makes. Everything they make is great. It's a mom and pop shop. Uh, they make these forges for a living and they do a great job at it. And I like them. I've been using them since probably about 2006. I've had uh, many of them. I've had enough of them to wear them out. So we have some things here. Chopper, neck knife, hog hunter, sax. Well, if I made a sax, it could be a hog hunter and a chopper. And if I made it small enough, it could be a neck knife. Dinosaur Damascus. All right. Yeah, well, Dinosaur Damascus is something made up um, by Will Stelter and Steve Schwarzer. It actually has pictures of dinosaurs in it. And if you want to see that, you got to go see what Will Stelter is doing with it. I'm not sure. But I know him and Steve did that, and it's very complicated. We probably wouldn't be able to shoot something like that in, I don't know, however long we're going to do this, 30 minutes or so. Uh, let me get some more ideas about what to make up there. Let's make something fun. Something fun. Get some steel. So I got a little chef's knife I made, and I'm gonna cut it off, and I'll do the tang later, but then I'll make something out of this part. It just, I don't know how many layers of steel it is, so I'll show you something if I can find a piece of chalk. Let me find some chalk real quick. Hey, Shell, you know where the chalk is? Right. Uh, dun dun dun. I'm gonna go find my ruler. Super chat. Ruler I'm looking for, because it's wooden. You know what happens to wooden rulers in the shop? They burn up. Burn up. So this one. I need uh, about an inch for, when I do an integral knife, an integral, I leave about one inch for the bolster, and then I leave probably another inch to pull out to make the tang. So I'm gonna chop that off real quick, and then we'll use the rest of this to make something fun. It's probably 20 some layers. It's kind of neat to make low layer pieces sometimes. And I also don't, this is, I don't really have a size that I want to use over here except for this. So I'm going to do this. I'm using Curtis's Plasteel uh, workbench he bought for this thing. <laughs> I think it's funny. Yep. Cut that off right there.
So we'll make something fun out of this piece. What? I don't know. Let's see. I want to thank Wiley from Rook Blade Works and Carl Green for the super, super chat contribution. I don't know what question you asked, but I hope we answered it. No? Just hanging in there. All right. Uh huh. A drop point. What if? What if? So I got this thing. I want to make a sashimi knife. If you don't know what that is, um, it's not on the list, but it has a weird grind to it. It's for cutting sushi, and it's hollowed out on the back and has a wedge in the front, kind of a different grind in the front. But one of the reasons it's shaped like that, whether you know it or not, is so when you cut it, it can lay on the rice a certain way, actually. So it's one reason it's shaped like that. But I've been thinking about doing that. Yeah, well, kind of like that. Similar, but just for raw fish. So let's forge that and see how it comes out. I think it'll be cool. I'm looking at all the things on the list over here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A mini cleaver. Mini cleaver is good for cheese. I like cheese. All right, I think out of all these, I'm gonna go with the, um, says Japanese chef's knife, but I'm gonna modify that a little bit into sashimi knife, okay? So that's what I'm gonna make. I think it'll be good. As soon as we get hot, Ford's hot. Steel's getting hot. It's kind of fun to make stuff with lower layers. Uh, you can do anything you want with that. I got some Damascus over here I did start. So this is what I do when I'm making just regular old, um, you know, linear Damascus. I say linear because I don't call it random. I, that's not accurate. There is... Uh, you will absolutely not be able to find a random, technically, in this world. As long as there's a sequence, there can be no random. And two things that mathematicians have not been able to find is uh, infinity and random. So that'd be interesting. If you don't believe me, look it up. I might have made it up, but I think it's true. So uh, this is about 25 layers or so. So what I'll do is I'll take it, I'll cut it, 10 pieces, restack, reweld. I have one bar, I got another bar, it's the same. I'll do the same thing for both of them. And then I have two stacks of steel and I'll make something from them. I'm getting where I prefer to make W's and crazier stuff. Hey, I wanna thank Paul Dunn, my number one fan right now for Super Chat. Thanks, man. All right, we need a selection of hammers over here. So let's get a hammer. I'll use the, no. Maybe I'll use this. Since Tiger Lily's not here, I'll use the locksmith hammer. I'll be on this anvil and that anvil. I'm gonna start out on the hammer because that's a little easier just to get my shape, get it going in the right direction. And the question is, should this be an integral knife? Yes or no? I'd like to know your answer. Because if you tell me, then I'll figure out how big of a piece of steel I need. Might need to go to the press first. Maybe it will be an integral knife. Hey, this is your first live feed. It is. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm going to go to hammer for a minute.
So all this little part of clicking off, that's not very important, that doesn't mean anything, but what I can do real quick, if you ever see that on there, it's really thin and it's just gonna probably keep doing that. It's, it's not, I don't want it, I mean, it's not gonna, I don't even want it. Turn it off real quick. This area will be the tang. That's all you got to do the tang anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And let me get one more little chunk off it out. So one of the things that I can explain, you'll learn how to solve problems when you start making knives. done this enough this is the end of the billet here so it's not it's not a part anybody typically uses anyway I've got about four inches here okay so I'm gonna take this part pretty small it's like uh, maybe four inches and that's what we're gonna use to make our integral sashimi knife We'll make it about an inch and a half wide and maybe somewhere between seven and nine inches long. I think that'll be, I think that'll be right on the money. This is a single bevel knife. Um, this is either right hand or left hand bevel. And then the back is kind of dished out. So if you're imagining what it looks like, the back side, I'll grind it with about a 48 inch radius. I have a platen for that like this. Front side will come this way and then this way to sharp. That front angle will just come right to zero. So the way probably best to sharpen it is just from the back. Just lay it flat and ch -ch -ch. I think that's how you sharpen it. But. All right, give that some heat again. Yes and no. I forgot what the question was. Oh, two no, three yes. So it looks like it's gonna be an integral. Talk about the Ghostbusters. So, uh, there's some questions about the Forge series. If you've gotten the first Forge series, will the second and third one uh, be free? Well, if you've gone to see the first Star Wars movie um, and you liked it, they didn't let you in the second one for free, but they got to make the second one because you went and saw the first one. And the same goes for us too. So we appreciate it so much. If you do get the second one and you don't have the first one, for a limited time, we're gonna give you access to the first one. So chapter two and three have been made. They are awesome. They're being edited right now. We will have them out soon. You can pre-order it right now if you wanna get it. You can pre-order. Uh, and there's uh, some special things going on. If you look on my Instagram, you'll be able to see, isn't there a special coin? How many coins are there? 500 coins. So if you're one of the first 500 people to purchase um, chapter two and three, you will get the coin. You will be in a special club no one else can be in because that's all we're gonna make of those coins. That's it. And uh, they're really cool. And I think Ryan's gonna go get one so he can show us what it looks like. In the meantime, this is hot and we're gonna hammer on it. I'm gonna go a little thinner, okay, Heath? Take this a little further. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna isolate this. This will be the tang. That part will be the tang. 
this part probably more than I need to make the blade but we're going to do it anyway gonna be nice all right get that hot again don't work the steel until it's cold work it when it starts the heat goes down it's 1400 degrees get it hot again pre-order get that coin there's only 500 of them do it now if you have not hit the subscribe button do it now leave a comment leave a thought leave a question but if you really want your question answered send it now I mean, it's so, we haven't done these in so long, it's kind of fun. All right, I mm, need some tongs. These are the tongs I'm looking for. So now I'm gonna make this pointy and set up my preform shape. I'll probably make this wider than I need. So I'm gonna do it now a little bit. Now I'm going to make pointy. Not a super wide knife. I make a I have a bad habit sometimes of making them too wide. Oh, let's see. I'm looking at my board. So I like if you've already gotten the Ford series and it helped you. If you just tell me what it is, if you send it through chat or something like that, we'll, we'll post it up. So Jeff Tarwater said, Ford's helped me a lot, especially with forging a point on a knife. So thanks, Jeff. I'm glad it helped. Uh, even if you don't have, you know, in the first series, it's all power hammer. And um, even if you don't have a power hammer, it's the same technique, it's the same way. I'll show it again right now, actually. finish it up over on the hammer so thanks Jeff help you make a point that's important that's one of the keys to making a knife of any kind I think is making a point oh best two steels at first attempt at Damascus so the two steels that I use I only do I only talk about what I currently use, okay? I don't say I used to do this, so I talk about what I currently use. So the best two steels, if you want to make Damascus, is 15 in 20. That's because it has about 2% nickel. And that's the shiny stuff. And my other favorite right now is 80 CRV2 because it gets really dark. So that dark, the dark black and the shiny silver finish look beautiful. You can mix whatever you want to mix, but I'm just telling you what I do because it's effective, it looks great, 
Two high carbon steels, they forge weld very easy. They hold up, they look great. All right, tuning this right here on the hammer. So what I'm doing now, Preform is the key. So Wiley Rock, thanks for your comment. And Wiley said, the series helped me with isolating the clip while preserving the belly of the recurve. Thanks, Wiley, that's the whole idea. I'm glad that worked for you. We got Mike, Mike Poor. Forge, push me to forge to shape. That's another great one. All right. So now I'm working on the, the preform shape. Always put your steel where you want it. That's our preform. I can make it longer and wider, and I'm gonna do both. Let's see how long is a sashimi knife supposed to be. I don't know, Fred, but they work. <laughs> Some technical questions I just can't answer. I don't really know. I don't understand how electricity works either. So if somebody asks me how the Ford series works, all I can tell you is it's web-based. That makes it very simple for you and for us too. Uh, we just have to have a big server to help get it out there to you. Um, looking up something. <coughs> Sure, it's going to give it to me in millimeters. Seven to 12 inches. Okay, so we're going to make this knife probably more like nine inches, all right? The trick really is going to be. This is stretching it out more.
All right. Let's see. This is probably close to nine. Yes, very. All right. Now we're going to make more width in this. So I'll go back to the hammer. I'm going to use my tongs and hammer to make that work. Some better tongs for this project. Oh, man, where are they at? Those are the tongs I'm looking for. But I bet they're over here somewhere. They look like this. They don't feel like that. So where would they be? Huh. I know where they are. Turn this down. So as I'm getting thinner too, I, I don't need that much heat. I'm gonna turn it down to about five PSI. That's about all I need. And I'm gonna go over to the hammer, Heath. almost done with the forging. So I was just using this for Tiger Lily because she wasn't here. She's in Alaska with the Deroziers. Go back while you still have thickness and reestablish the profile where you want it. You put it where you want it. Let's see, right? There we go. It's a good habit to get into when you're forging. So I got my profile back where I want it. We're gonna go a little wider, not too wide. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what the width is. Again, I'm sure it's measured in millimeters. I'm gonna look around the shop. Ho! Oh, I wanna thank my super chat, Zane and Amber Beard forged help me to Step my game up by discovering, wait, by encouraging me to forge more. <laughs> okay, thank you. I appreciate y'all, Zane and Amber. Very good. Rick Stevens, forge helped me a lot with fit and finish. All right, good. And that was a brute de forge knife. Graydon McKee, Graydon McKee. Forge helped me understand the preform process definitely getting chapter two and three thanks man thanks Graydon. i appreciate that i found the tongs i'm looking for they're over here cool all right here's one thing we are looking for my friend steve schwarzer has a master roshi doll that looks just like him it's one of them big head things all right if you want to find or have made for me a big head, whatever they call them, I don't know what they call them. Uh, I'll give you my address. <laughs> and you can send me one. <laughs> if somebody wants it, say that, say that they want to make one or have one made and I'll, I'll give them the address. So I'm going a little further and I'm gonna 
If your thickness in your preform, if your thickness and profile are uniform, the forging will usually be pretty uniform, but my hammer hits a little harder on this side, and that's by design. So I'm going back to tune this up, and then we're almost done with the forging part of this thing. So we'll, we'll chop it off and, and do the handle. So now I want, the bevel is actually all on one side on this thing, so I'm gonna make sure I do that properly, or I hope. So my bet this side's gonna be flat with the kind of dished out, and this side is gonna have the bevel on it. So I wanna make sure I do that right. I've not done this before, so it will be, uh, I think, a bit tricky. Uh, it's the forging part. I'm over forging, so I'm, I'm thicker on this. This will be a finished knife. I'm thicker than I need to be uh, because it's got some patterning in. We wanna etch it and make it look cool. I think it'll look cool. Show you a cool little thing. You want me to go here? It won't fit in. It won't fit in this one. Are you on? Is this camera working here too? I'll turn this thing. We have some more angles. So I'm gonna be using this. I might change my hammer a wee bit here. All right. Okay, so this little block keeps that blade from sliding away from me. And so you can thank me later. Get it hot. So if you haven't seen that before, it's kind of a neat little tool you can make. Forge this part first, forge this part second, weld them together, get them hot, and then make them fit the hole properly. Or you can make it all out of one piece. I just didn't have a chunk that big to do, so I made mine out of two parts. But it keeps the blade from moving away. I'm gonna tune it up. It will get away from me really easy. So I'll show you, see, when I'm, I'm working against it right here, the thinner you get, the faster it cools off. That's the direction right there. There's one side that's right and one side, that's the way it fits. Getting close, but this might help you. You can work it either way. You can work from here. You can work over here. Um, <coughs> I don't. I mean, my hardy holes up here in a, in a weird spot. If you have a 
like a London pattern, they're usually back here further. So I just work it one side or the other. You know, I'll come over here, work here, or work here. Either way is fine. All right. Put that back. So I want to get my profile straight again because I'm getting thinner, it's getting finer, and it's getting away from me. So I don't want it to get away. I'm liking that. Might have to go to my other hand wall. We're getting close. Let me give it a little squeeze over here. The easiest way to care for a carbon steel kitchen knife or any other kind, whether it's stainless clad or, you know, that'd be stainless on the outside of the carbon core or a Damascus one or a stainless one. Use it and enjoy it. When you get done using it, wash it off with hot soapy water dry it off by hand, put it back in your rack. All the carbon steel knives are going to discolor. That's just what they do. That's the nature of them. They're going to discolor. Uh, they develop really nice patinas. It doesn't hurt the food. It doesn't damage the food. Uh, you know, people made chef's knives and kitchen knives out of carbon steel for ever until just recently and still the technology's not nailed it. There's some great stainless chef's knives out there. I've made some, I've used some by other makers, um, but I still prefer old carbon steel. So hot soapy water, uh, if you throw one in the dishwasher, you deserve whatever happens to it. All right, I'm gonna give this thing a little squeeze. about all I want. So I got my flat side, I got my bevel side, I'm happy with that. Just gonna tune it up a little bit and then we'll be done. So all flat now, I was using the round side to move it, now I'm gonna use the flat side to smooth it. And I may go back to use this again because I kinda like the way it works. Just gonna make sure I got it on the right side. Yeah, it fits better that way, okay. Okay. Where's That's about it. Just need to get it straight and then do the tang. Well, this edge is almost straight, so I, I need to probably drop that point a little bit need too much point on this thing. Hmm. I think I made it for the wrong hand. Here's a great time to share with you how to fix something. <laughs> so when you're making a sashimi knife and you forge the bevel on the wrong side, the best thing to do is to probably just go ahead and turn it into a chef's knife because I put the bevel on the left side. So this would be for a lefty and I don't want it for a lefty. I want it for a righty. And since the bevel's on the other side, now what do you do? Because I did screw up, and that happens a lot, whether you know it or not. So what I'm gonna do is put the bevel on this side. So what I need to do goes over there. What I wanna do is bend it back. So what we can do is go to the vise for that. Just 
gonna push it over. Man! I think it happened when I was using my uh, fancy cutler's block there. Okay, now I have made it on the correct side. Hopefully I can fix it without making it too thin, which is probably, probably can. Probably can. Try this again. Chad Brown, Ford's got me to visualize primary and secondary lines while forging. Very cool. That word means nothing. What does that word mean? That, that first word? Oh, okay, spade. So, changing the bevel. Oh, you almost got it. You almost got it. funny because we're you know normally we're trying to get the bevel in the middle and I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff to it so now I think I might have it fixed that's probably fine all right now I'm gonna flat it this thing is still running about 16 times hotter than I want it to Much better. All right. I think we got this. There's a hammer I need for this that I just don't have. All right. This is the bevel I'm looking for here. Okay, now just getting it straight. All right. Okay, should be good.
just bending it now. I'm not trying to move anything. I just want to straighten it and flatten it. All right, okay, cool. Now, another thing I like to do is flatten in the vise. So I'll come over here, use the vise to get it flat. I need a little hammer. This is what I like. And that's about the right temperature. Make sure I do it in the right direction. Yeah, I think I got it all moved back to where I wanted it which is, it's kind of weird, but when you, certain knives, the bevel is actually on one side and there's a reason for it to be on one side, especially this one. It's actually a pretty difficult knife to make. That's why I wanted to try it, because I like raw fish. I don't like the rice necessarily with it. I just like the sashimi part. Weird, right? All right, let's see. We are not too bad, not too straight, but the edge is straight and it's on one side, so that's what matters. The problem with these sometimes is they'll warp pretty good, so I do minimal grinding before I harden them. I get them cleaned up, harden them, and then I do all the grinding afterwards because it's such a thin cross section. Um, I don't really want to risk the wrinkling and all the crazy stuff that happens you get some decarb so when you're forging any kind of culinary knife they're thinner finer so you forge them a little thicker all right All right, now we're gonna chop it off and do the thing. As long as I have tongs to grab it with. These are the tongs I'm looking for. Okay, I don't need that much. I think this will be cool. Oh yeah, I will start streaming more. <laughs> I will start streaming more. We're gonna be doing that uh, all week, kinda. We're gonna be doing a lot more live streams. We just, sometimes it's hard to coordinate all of it. Um, some of the things maybe you don't know about filming and having a crew, right now we have three cameras. Um, We've got two cameramen, we've got one. Uh, Ryan is doing sound. Shelly is writing the questions up on the board. So I'm forging. Of course, this is quite an undertaking, whether you understand it or not. But when you're doing, when I'm doing live feed anyway, I'm trying to make it as professional quality as possible so you can see what we're doing. You can send in questions, we can answer questions. It's, it's crazy expensive, but I do it because 
I want to share and I want you to know and I want you to enjoy this and I want you to make it your art. And that is a lot of tang right there. That is more tang than the astronauts took to the moon, probably. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now just adjust this just a bit. I don't need this much, but. I want it to not drop. A lot of times, uh, you know, a chopper handle can drop a little bit, but on a kitchen knife, you don't want the handle to drop so much, okay? You want it to be, usually I make it in line with the spine. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit more. And these are what I consider, I put as much steel in there as possible, if you've ever seen me do one. It's a hidden full tang to a degree because there's, there's a lot of steel in there. It's a good foundation. I don't make rat tail tangs or all that, whatever people, you know, I don't even know who started saying that, rat tail tangs. That's, that's where, it's not me. It's not what I like to make. I like to make knives that are going to last for long, long, long years. Hopefully, they'll, they'll be used and loved so much they end up getting used up. That would be the cool part, the coolest thing that can happen. Okay, it's pretty close, let's see. Edge bubble, well, got a little straighten right there. All right, there's our sashimi knife. Partially finished. So, integral sashimi knife. So it'll be flat on this side, a little bit of a bevel, like a 48 inch radius. Actually, it'll be flat on this side. This is the bevel side, yes. So we radius on this side, flat, and then bevel on this side. And it'll just come to zero sharp. There won't be any secondaries or anything in there. But that's it, it's probably 20 some layers of steel. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope it helped you. I uh, hope you'll be chiming in for the next live stream. And I know you're gonna get the Forged series. If you haven't got one, uh, get two, and we'll give you access to one, two. Get two and three. You're going to love it. It's going to help you. You will be inspired to make, and I know you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to turn this off. All right. Yeah. What we want. All right. Let's heat that up a little bit. 